House is a non-denominational church located just a few miles from Glasgow, Kentucky on the Edmonton Road. The Shepherd's House family invites you to Bible study on Sunday at 9 a.m., worship service at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, and the Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. Midweek service at the Shepherd's House is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Shepherd's House family cordially invites you to any of these services. Those of us that's uh, joining, or those of you that are joining us by television, I want to make an announcement both for the congregation here and for those that are joining us by television and also those that are watching the program on the World Wide Web and other countries, other states that's outside of the TV viewing area. On June the 20th uh, at 7 p.m., that's on Saturday night, June the 20th, the McCamies will be here at the Shepherd's House Church in concert. So uh, I wanted to be sure to make that announcement and let everybody know the McCamies will be here on uh, June the 20th, Saturday night, June the 20th at 7 o'clock. Now this time there will be a $15 donation uh, taken at the door. I want you to be aware of that before you came. Last time they were free. This time uh, we're allowing the inspired uh, promotions to uh, use our building our facility, and of course we're going to be here, but uh, nevertheless uh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord, and this is what they have to do in order uh, to be able to uh, get the McCamies here on a Saturday night, and uh, what a privilege to be able to have them on a Saturday night where you can be off from work and can be here, right here at the Shepherd's House Church uh, on the Edmonton Road out of Glasgow, Kentucky. So that's the McCamies, June the 20th, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. So bring a car load and come on out and be with us. You better get here a little early so you'll be able to find a place to sit. The last time we set out chairs and had people standing up and had a big crowd. So we're going to believe we'll have it that way again. And they've done a wonderful job. And I believe they'll do good again. All right. Those have your Bibles like to read along with us. Let's turn in to the Word of God now into St. Luke's Gospel, some very familiar scripture that I'd like to share with you out of the Word of God. And hopefully this will be a blessing to you. And I'm going to be preaching and doing a little preaching and teaching today. And uh, hopefully this will, will minister to you. In St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 13, verse number 6, it says, And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and found none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Job chapter number 14, verse number 7 says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the sin of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Revelation chapter number 12, verse number 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives 
until the death. Let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you again this day thanking you, Lord, for being such a good God. Thanking you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer. Thanking you for always being there to meet every need that we have. Father, we thank you for being such an awesome God. And I thank you for being an on-time God. I thank you, Lord, for being faithful to those, Lord, that have chose to give you their hearts. Lord, that has turned everything, Lord, over to you that has found the pearl of great price. Lord, and that pearl of great price being Jesus, our King, our Savior, our Lord, Father, and our Master. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for taking care of your children. I thank you for hearing every prayer. Lord, for hearing the prayers of those that are strong, hearing the prayers of those that are weak, hearing the prayers of those that are financially well off, and hearing the prayers of those that don't even have two nickels to rub together. Lord, I'm so thankful that you are a good God, thankful that the ground is level at Calvary. Father, I'm thankful today, Lord, that you love us unconditionally. Lord, when we're strong and when we're weak, we're thankful that you love us. And I'm thankful, Lord, that you're taking care of those that love you. And Father, I thank you for being such a good shepherd. And I pray today that you would anoint us because we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to fall in this place today. Father, I need you, Lord, to be the great puppeteer and allow me to only be the puppet. Lord, use me. Pull the strings that needs to be pulled. And Father, Lord, hold back those that does not. I pray, Father, to guide us. Use us, Lord, and anoint these lips of clay that I might bring honor, praise, and glory to a risen Savior. And Father, I'm the first to admit that I can not even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I'm less than nothing without you. But Father, I know you have the ability to take nothing and make something out of it. Lord, we're so thankful that you took a handful of clay one day and you made man and, and made him a living soul and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and Adam became the first living soul. I'm thankful, Lord, that you can take a world that's in the middle of darkness, a universe that's void and black, and you can uh, just speak, let there be light. And the sun appeared in the universe, and you made a little ball of clay that we call the earth, that we call home. Lord, and you put all the things that's in the heavenlies and caused them to orbit, Lord, uh, in sequence, the way that you designed it and organized it and willed it to be. Father, I'm so glad that you're in charge of my life and I'm thankful you're in charge of my tomorrow and you're in control of my today. And Lord, you pulled me through yesterday. Lord, and kept me one step in front of the enemy. Lord, I just pray that you would bless, move, and anoint, Lord, today. Father, because I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Help me to preach to the multitudes. Help me to preach to that lost boy, Lord, that's uh, drinking alcohol. Lord, that watching the television program that thinks that the only hope he has is in the bottom of a bottle. Help me teach him about Jesus, Lord. And Father, that woman that's uh, suicidal, that thinks she has nothing to live for, Lord, that's depressed and down and about ready to give up. I pray that the Holy Ghost, Lord, would come and anoint this program today, that, Lord, that they would understand that they're loved and respected and appreciated no, no matter how far back they've went, no matter how bad that they've been, that, Lord, you love them and you'll come right into the living room, Lord, of their house and into the living room of their heart. Lord, and give them peace and joy. And Lord, and to help them to understand that they've got something to live for and they've got the King of glory on their side. Father, we pray this day, Lord, you would move in such a way that you would touch every person, Lord, that is sick. Every person that the doctor has gave a bad report that scared them and caused them, Lord, to question, Lord, whether or not they're going to be here very long. Help them to realize in their heart, Lord, that the word 
it says it's appointed unto men once to die and after death is judgment and Lord their life is in your hands and they're not going to die till you tell them that it's time for them to go. Help them take comfort in that Lord and help them take comfort Lord in knowing there's an all seeing eye that doesn't miss anything and those that's been false accused Lord, those out there the Lord that's had lies told on them, I pray Father give them comfort Lord in knowing that you know the truth no matter what somebody might have said about them Father I'm thankful you're the you're a righteous judge you are a just judge and Lord that you will not give any man anything Lord that's unjust or wrong we're so thankful Lord to be in the hands of a mighty God and Lord we commit everything that we have and all that we are Lord into your design your control and Father I pray that you would smile and give us favor Lord this day and it's in Jesus name we pray Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, it's good to be here today. It's good to feel the presence of the Lord. Man, if I get a better anointing when I'm preaching than I did when I'm praying, I'm getting ready to have a time. Amen. Here in the Word of God. Amen. Here at the dresser of the vineyard have been working with his fig tree, there's no doubt. And the Lord of the vineyard, I begin to walk through the vineyard and begin to look at the fig trees and begin to examine those that were bringing forth fruit and those that were accomplishing the thing uh, that he planted uh, and he fertilized uh, and that he had weeded and that he had hoed and cultivated, uh, amen, to bring forth fruit. Uh, no doubt he was looking at the many trees uh, that were hanging full of figs and he was thinking at the end of the day my labors and my purpose has uh, brought forth fruit uh, but there's a tree over here that's caught my eye and I've been watching that tree now for three years uh, and they haven't bloomed uh, they haven't budded uh, there's not been a fig uh, growed on that tree uh, and they're withered and they're dead uh, and he said I want that thing pulled up uh, and cut down and destroyed uh, and the dresser of the vineyard said, listen, Lord, would you give me one more year? <laughs> would you give me one more year and let me dig around this thing? Uh, let me fertilize it like I've never fertilized it before. Let me spend a little more time around this thing. And if I can't get it to grow after one more year, then you can cut it down. Uh, and the Lord of the vineyard, uh, amen, went along with that request uh, and gave him an opportunity, uh, amen, to dig around, uh, amen, the fig tree and cause it to come back to life. Let me tell you something, folks. Every one of us are like a fig tree, amen, that's planted, amen, in God's garden today. And no doubt he walks, even though he's a just God, he's a loving and a merciful God. Today he's our friend, but there'll be one day he'll become our judge. Amen, the Bible says you'll know the tree by the fruit that it bears. If it has bad fruits on it, it'll be judged by those bad fruits uh, if it has no fruits of all at all uh, it'll be judged because uh, amen it has no fruits uh, now today I don't want you to look at somebody sitting next to you and judge whether or not you like their fruit or not that's not what this message is about I want you to think about a mirror amen that's in front of you and I'm going to think about a mirror that's in front of me amen and that's the one that we need to be a judging today that's the one that we need to be examining uh, amen if we're finding fault. Amen. Now you may have somebody false accusing you, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You're going to know whether or not they're telling a lie on you or whether or not they're just telling the truth and it hurts and it makes you mad. There ain't nothing hurts any worse than the truth. Amen. The whole truth, the absolute, absolute truth. Amen. Nothing but the truth. Amen. It'll make every one of us mad. Oh, Brother Jimmy, it don't make me angry. Liar. It does too. You just see somebody don't point out your fault if you don't get in their face. Or if you don't attack them back. We don't like the truth. Amen. Now you don't have to agree with it because you don't like the truth. I know you don't like the truth. You know you don't like the truth. So it's settled. You don't like the truth. Amen. But the truth will make us free. Amen. It says in John 8, 32, I believe it is. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It does not set you free. It makes you free. There's a little bit of a difference. Uh, amen. You can be set free from jail and go back in again. But you're made free. You're made to stay that way. Boy, that'll preach. 
Amen. You're made to, come, uh, to, to be that way the rest of your life. Uh, amen. It's not a one-day thing. Uh, amen. I know some folks that got out of jail and is locked up in two days again for the same thing again, public drunkenness or drugs or, or whatever. Amen. They were set free and locked up again. 1982, I was made free, and I believe I'm more freer now than I was then. Amen. I'm still free. Amen. Through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And through the word of my testimony. Amen. That I have that he is. And he's the author. Amen. Of my faith. And he will bless those. Amen. That will call upon him. Now in the word of God. Here we see where that the tree was examined. After examining the tree. I'm going to look at my tree. And I'm going to say well you need a little of this over here. And you need a little of that over there. And you need to take a little of this right here out. Now what do I need? to do with it. I need to dung it. Amen. First, you need to dig around it real good. When you dig around it, you're examining yourself. Uh, amen. You're telling yourself the truth, uh, and you're going to get mad at yourself. Now, put your hands down so you don't black your own eye. Amen. When you get mad enough to tell yourself the truth. Now, hold on to your hands so you don't get a hair and start trying to choke yourself because you done preached yourself a sermon. See, if we would examine ourselves and preach ourselves, amen, a sermon, and watch how we live, we would never get mad at the preacher. Amen. I could just lay around and pray for people and uh, just minister to the lost and wouldn't have to fight with angry church members, uh, amen, that are more carnal than they are uh, spiritual because if we're spiritual, they're going to say, Preach it, brother. Amen. Pour it on. Praise God. You took off two toes, but preach on the other foot. I need to be straightened up. And that old moss back hypocrite said, well, he done it in the wrong spirit. He knew I was the only one there that robbed the bank and he preached on stealing. <laughs> he just picked me right out of the crowd and just poured it on me, you old hypocrite, you. Amen, who do you think you are preaching to over four million people and you're the only one the sermon hits? It's because you're guilty. You throw a rock in the pen, amen, the hog that squeals is the one that the rock hit. Amen. Listen, if you can't take the heat, you need to get out of the kitchen. Amen. Listen, we need to be examining ourselves. Amen. Finding out where, Lord, do I stand with you and help me dig around me real good. Help the preacher dig around me real good. And help me, Lord, not get mad at the truth, but help me to be a big boy with big boy preachers on and let me take it. Amen. It's time for me to get rid of my fat crayons and start coloring like a first grader instead of a kindergartner. Amen. It's time to grow and to move up. Amen. It's time to realize who we are and the fault that we have, and we need to work on it. Now here, the dresser of the vineyard said, I'm going to dig around that thing really good. And then I'm going to fertilize it. I'm going to throw all the fertilizer I can around it. I'm going to tell you what, folks. Amen. When you get real squeaky clean, amen, uh, through repentance, then you need to be seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Get you some fertilizer, amen, that will keep you going, get you going, and keep you going. Amen. I wish you could have heard some of the testimonies yesterday. Amen. From one in particular. Amen. I talked about the, they got saved many years ago, and then the Lord filled them with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is able to keep them. Amen. And give them a better desire. Give them more power. Amen. And that's what it's all about. It's not getting something so you're better than somebody else. It's getting something so you can be better than yourself. Amen. And you can be full of light and positive thinking and full of joy and have the anointing of the Spirit of God. Amen. Now looking here in the Word of God, amen, the, uh, the first thing the Lord of the vineyard said was, why cumbereth it the ground? Why does it take up dead space? It's no good to me. Now here, I want you to look at ourselves. Again, you look in your mirror, let me look in my mirror. What is it that I need to do? Am I attending church like I ought to? Am I paying my tithes like I need to? Am I supporting the ministry, a ministry somewhere like I'm supposed to? Am I a part of something that's doing something to touch people's lives? Am I an encouragement to other people? Do I need to pray more often? Do I need to sit down? 
amen, in front of uh, the Word of God and read. I was using this illustration here this morning. I'm going to use it again today. You know what? There's a lot of people that does, amen, instead of getting a hold of more of the Spirit, this is what they seek after. I want you to get a good picture of this on television. Zoom in there real good. Yeah, get it where it ain't, blur ain't blurry. It's your remote control. Instead of seeking after more power with God, you seek after a better remote control. Amen. And some people want one of them blessed televisions uh, that's got a little screen on the bottom so you can watch one channel. Amen. While you're watching another one. Boy, that'll preach. I get people in church like that. I'm watching a preacher, but I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing this evening. I'm looking at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and, and the grandkids is coming over at 3 o'clock this evening, and I wish to goodness he'd shut up. Or somebody else is looking and saying, you know what? I'm seeing a steak at Colton's. And I'm seeing the, an all-you-can-eat buffet on the bottom part of that screen. I'm watching the preacher. Preach on, brother, but I'm looking at that steak. I'm sitting here lusting after that juicy steak and then potatoes with butter on top of them and a piece of cornbread. Glory to God. And you don't know where they're shouting over your preaching or looking at that screen on the bottom corner that's got cornbread and a steak in it. But something's moving them because you're thinking about one thing or two things at the same time. I want to tell you something. Most of the people, it's kind of like me. You can't hardly walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. We don't need to be looking at two screens. We were studying in the Word of God this morning how that Jesus, amen, was telling us plainly in his Word, amen, if we're not willing to carry the cross, the burden of the cross, and follow him, we cannot be his disciple. And there's people today, amen, they want to walk with Jesus, but they don't want one that's got a cross. They don't want one that's got a burden to it. They want to be free to go when they want to to church, do what they want to, and if they feel like putting a dollar in, put in a dollar. If they don't feel like putting nothing in, why just grunt as they pass the offering plate. <sighs> Brother Jimmy, I'm being led by the Spirit. No, you ain't either, because the Spirit leads you to pay your tithes. He bring that calculator out when the Holy Ghost goes to moving. Made four hundred dollars, you owe forty. Ha 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 ha! You know it's a moving of the Spirit. Well, Brother Jimmy, I just didn't feel moved. I, you might have felt if you get if you have to wait to eat cucumbers to find out if you're going to put in a ten instead of a dollar. There's something wrong. Now I don't usually preach on this. I'm just going to I'm just going to unload the whole wagon while I'm here today. I ain't got into the message. The title of the message today is the root of the matter. It's what I'm going to be preaching about. I ain't got to the roots yet. Amen. But I'm headed that way. I'm in the top of the tree, heading to the ground, fertilizing. Then we're going to work on them roots here in a minute. Amen. Because there's some roots, amen, that's causing problems. The tree will never bud forth anymore unless you get the roots fixed. Amen. The roots has got to be fixed. Where do you think all the water comes from? Well, Brother Timmy, it comes from the sky. It does. But how does it get into the tree? When it hits the leaves. Wrong. It goes into the roots. Amen. There may be some that goes into the leaves, but there won't be much. Amen. The life-staining sufficient amount of water and nutrients goes through the roots. You kill the roots, you kill the tree. Now, Job said there is hope if a tree is cut down at the very scent of water that it will bud again and bring forth a, a, a life. Even that the stump is, is rotten. Amen. I'll agree with that. But you know what? You can have a rotten stump and good roots, it'll blossom again. It'll come back to life. It'll bud. I've seen it happen many times with a cedar tree and, and, and others. If you leave that one bottom limb in there, that thing will suck her out. You can saw down uh, sometimes uh, uh, formosas or whatever, and you'll see a little limb come out under where you cut. It'll branch out. Next thing you know, you'll have another formosa tree or whatever it might be. And just a little bit, Bradford pear or whatever. We've seen that. We've got some of them here on the property that got broke out the wind, break it off the top of the ground, and then it'd suck her out and grow again. Hey, Amen. There's hope. But if you kill the roots... Amen. Of that tree, it's dead. It's gone forever. 
I'm, can I read you a little something here? This is something educational that will go right along with what I'm preaching today. And there's a lot of people that, that's not aware of this. And I'm going to use this. Jesus used parables to help us have a better understanding of the message that he was trying to preach. And I'm going to use one today. I'm going to talk to you about bagworms. Boy, that'll preach. A bagworm. Amen. I'm going to read some things. Now, this come out of a dictionary. If your home is surrounded by trees, chances are they are bunches of little bags hidden in the bark of the tree trunks. Inside may be hundreds and possibly a thousand eggs containing bagworms. The bagworm larvae prefer red cedar above all as well as apple, birch, black locust, cypress, elm, juniper, oak, pine, poplar, spruce, and sycamore. The bagworm occurs mostly from New England to Nebraska and south through the state of Texas. I've had a few hit the church here <laughs> in Glasgow, Kentucky. Amen. They're just all over the place. Now that bagworm, amen, and that pouch comes from a moth that lays eggs and crawls up under that bark and hides itself. I'm going to tell you something, folks. This is a preach. Amen. The devil brings a lot of stuff into your life, amen, into your path, amen. When you're just thinking, I'm a tree, I'm a tree, I'm bringing forth a tree fruit. I'm a tree for my God. I'm going to let my branches grow. And while you're busy looking at your fruit and saying oh, soul, take ease and enjoy the giftings and the callings that God's put on your life. Enjoy the good things God's gave you. There's a moth that comes flying into your life. Crawls up under, amen, your bark and lays a bunch of eggs. Amen. Can be from 300, uh, maybe even as much as a, a thousand and eggs in a little bag that's undetected and unseen and then those bags, amen, when they begin to hatch, amen, they go into the ground and sometimes turn into root maggots that will eat those roots. And when you've got worms that are eating roots, amen, the nutrients that needs to be going into those roots are going into the worms. And then the roots will cause the tree leaves to begin to stop giving fruit. Amen. And, and, and the branches to stop giving fruit. And the leaves can start withering and wilting and dying. Amen. And the next thing you know, that tree will stop bringing forth fruit. And then, amen, we could be cut down by God. And see, the way to do this is have early detection. Look at our bark. Check ourselves for some bag worms. See if them things is, uh, attach themselves to us without us knowing what kind of bag worms. Uh, amen. I can give you a little bit of them. Amen. That bag worm about missing church. Uh, amen. And having power. Amen. Over the remote control. But you ain't got power over your car keys. Amen. Amen. Wanting to sing that song. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. And then Sunday morning, you can't even get a blessed sheet pulled off of you. Amen. To get up and get in the shower and get into the house of God. Amen. You got some back worms. Amen. That's to test themselves to you. Amen. It calls the spirit of laziness. Amen. To come upon you. And there's no tree that's too lazy to blossom going to bring forth fruit. Mm. Hey man, you're going to have to have enough strength and enough get up and go to get yourself up and to go to the house of God. Hey man, well, brother Jimmy, he preaches what I've already learned. Hey man, you're, you're a lot smarter than what I am. I've been studying this book for over 30-something years now, and I'm still learning something uh, just every few days. God's giving me another crumb, another nugget, hey man, that comes from heaven. And I pray, I said, oh God, give me a message to preach uh, that will touch the people, uh, that will cause them to open their eyes uh, and to see the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And I try to keep myself around the Word of God. I'm making plans this week, amen, to go and spend most of the week in Independence, Kentucky. I'm going to sit under Brother Tommy Bates, amen, Brother John Parrish from Oklahoma, and a whole church full of holy rollers shouting the praises of God. And I'm going to jump right in the middle of them. And I'm going to say, Lord, Take off the dead limbs. Preach to me. Show me my faults. Show me my errors. Show me my, show me my shortcomings. And help me to move up to where I need to be. Fill me with more of your power. Give me more wisdom, more anointing, and fix everything in this old clock that's not ticking like it needs to. I'm not talking about heart problems. I'm talking about body problems. Amen. After you turn 50 years old, you got at least three things wrong with you. Amen. <laughs> Something don't work every day. And what does work don't work right. <laughs> Amen. You learn when you're young, you can eat an iron wedge. When you get old, you better be careful eating a marshmallow. <laughs> Amen. Things changes uh, all through your system. Uh, amen. You understand what? <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Amen, but we need to be looking, amen, at the root of the problem. Amen, looking to see where the problem starts. Amen, and that's at the root, and that's where the bad worm is. It don't go to the leaves at the top. It don't head for the blossom. It don't go for the fruit. It loves the root, and if you can get to the root, it don't do anything but just get a hold of and, and suck on it. I'm going to tell you something about the bad worms. Amen, if you just had one bad worm, amen, it turned into a root maggot, you wouldn't have no problem but see it's the thousand of them things at one time you know what we're having right now today and in the air that we're living in we got more problems than you ever heard before I never heard of as much discouragement in my life I never heard of as many people uh, that held positions in churches uh, running off with somebody else's wife uh, amen uh, 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 extorting amen with money uh, or something and doing something that's wrong Amen. The pickle old player and the deacon takes off and goes to Mexico. I just made that up. Amen. They take off and go somewhere together. Leaves the church hurt and full of pain. Did you ever see a time when you heard as many uh, automobile accidents and tragedies, uh, amen, that are taking our young people uh, off the highways? Uh, it breaks my heart. Uh, it makes me sick to my stomach, uh, amen, to see kids. Uh, and the sad thing about it is today, the majority of the people are unchurched. Uh, they're unlearned. Uh, they don't know anything about Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, parents put them uh, behind the wheel of an automobile mobile and gives them license and gas and to head down the highway, amen, just any moment could get killed, amen, and don't ever think about taking them to the house of God, never think about, amen, teaching them about Jesus, amen, never think about teaching them about the judgment day and then and, and teach them that they need to repent and get right with God because there's going to be a day they're going to stand before the judgment, but see, they take chances on letting them little bag worms, amen, grow on their children's tree, amen, letting them little bag worms, uh, amen, begin to be laid, uh, amen, in the trunk, uh, amen, of the tree that you're supposed to be bringing on her. Praise and glory to the Lord. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Uh, I've heard different people lately say, we're just not seeing uh, many of the lost saved. No, because the church has got bag worms. That's the reason why. Amen, the lost is not getting saved. Amen, the church's roots, amen, are being eat on. Amen, by the root maggot. They're not getting the nutrients. Well, Brother Jimmy, things are just not in the ground like they ought to be. Oh, yes, they are too. Now, listen, folks, you can blame, amen, uh, uh, some of the ministries. I know you can where the preachers are backed up. They're not preaching the truth. That, you can blame that. Sometimes you can blame it on some of the churches that are so religiously uh, bound, uh, amen, in doctrine, a man's doctrine, not doctrine of the word, amen, that you're crippled and they hindered, you can probably bring uh, blame some of that uh, on that. You can blame some of the people that are in control of the church and, and they keep the Holy Spirit back, the preacher under control, amen. <laughs> they only let the Lord in when he comes when they want him. I mean, you can blame that on some of the churches. I realize that, but you can have the best church uh, that there is in the area, the most anointed preacher that there is anywhere around, and if you don't examine yourself uh, and make sure there's no bag worms, uh, they'll be right on your roots. Uh, you'll sit and wilt uh, under a heavy anointing. I don't know how many times I've heard story after story after story, and it's happened here. Well, you'd have homosexuals sitting in an audience, and the preacher preaching against homosexuality, they'd be saying, Amen. 
preach it on and they were gay themselves and find out later, amen, the problems that they caused, amen, because of being gay and I tell you, it just breaks your heart and you think, how could they sit there under such an anointing? Because their roots have been ate up by maggots. They're not getting anything that's coming from the pulpit. They're hearing a noise. They're not hearing the word. They're seeing a moving of God. They're not feeling the moving of God. Amen. They're not feeling it because the maggots just ate the word, uh, ate the roots up. Uh, amen. And there's nothing going in to the main part of the tree. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Uh, you can have all kinds of fertilizer. You can be digged around. You can stand with a water hose once a day and water that. If God blesses it, it'll grow. But if there's worms got on the roots, you watch that tree die right beside of other trees. Uh, amen. That are, that, 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 that are flourishing and giving forth fruit. And what I'm trying to say is when, he, when the Lord of the vineyard pours out his fertilizer, he does the same to all of them. How many ever heard of side dressing? You know what I'm talking about? That's where, of course, you fertilize the ground when you put your garden or whatever it is that you're growing out. And, and then you cultivate it. And just as you get ready to... to uh, Plow it the last time, you go in and you side dress it. You take fertilizer, put it up and down the side of the row, and you plow it in. And then you lay it by, and you just wait then and watch it grow until time for harvest. Listen, when the Lord of the vineyard, uh, amen, uh, sends his anointing out, it goes to everybody in the church. Everybody gets the same equal amount of fertilizer. And the Bible says when it rains, it rains on the just and the unjust. So the unjust gets just as much water as the just gets. So everybody gets equal fertilizer. Everybody gets equal water. Everybody is loved and judged the same. But there's some that's allowed those bad worms. They've allowed those spirits, amen, to get in their life. They've allowed those things to attach themselves, amen, and there's multiple worms pulling on their root, and there's nothing that breaks the heart of a pastor when he looks through the congregation and sees this one and this one and this one growing, and this one and this one and this one changing and seeing the light of the Lord on them, and the rest of them you sit and watch them wilt every Sunday. And you just preach and pray, oh, God, give me a better anointing. What am I doing that I'm not reaching them? Lord, do I need to quit my ministry? I'm going to say this to some of the preachers out there. Don't you quit. It's probably not your preaching. It's the worms that's in the roots of the people. Uh, and you can pour on the gospel and do the best you can to love them. And they'll die right in front of you because there's multiple worms on the roots. Amen. Don't, don't get discouraged and don't, get, don't quit. I'm going to tell you something. There's a, a few times in my ministry many years ago I got really discouraged. I thought real close about quitting a time or two because I got to looking at the people, me preaching my heart out, and watch them spiritually die. And I got to blaming myself. It must be me. I tell my wife, I said, there's something I'm not doing right. She said, honey, it ain't you. I can feel the anointing. I can hear the word. It tears me up. I, there's something wrong with them. Well, they, why can't I move them? Because there's worms. They got root worms. Amen. They won't dig the worms up. They won't pull their root up and get rid of them. They won't call, oh, Lord, kill the root maggots. Lord, take those things out of my life. They don't need to be there. They're, it's sucking the nutrients. It's sucking all the life that's in me. I'm watching my fruit dry up on my own branches. And I'm looking at myself. I'm examining myself. I'm not seeing the bright testimony that I used to have. I'm not seeing myself witness. Now, don't nobody lift your hand up. But I just wonder how many people today has thought this or said this. I got so many problems being bombarded in so many different directions. I just hadn't been in no shape to witness to anybody lately, right? Bag worms. Well, Brother Jimmy, I can't help some of these things that comes. That's right, some of them you can't. But those that you can't help, you can pray and walk off and leave it. I'm going to say this to some of you that labels yourself as Mr. and Miss Fix-It. Got to fix everything that's broken with everybody. You're killing yourself. You're killing yourself. You don't have the ability to do that. And Mr. and Miss Fix-It 
you'll have everybody in the family and the neighborhood bringing the dump truck to your door. Give you all my problems because it ain't going to drive me nuts. I'm going to give somebody else to worry about it. I'm going to go home, put in a movie. I'm going to relax because I put it on old brother Donnie over here because I know he's a praying man. He'll pray for me. I'll go home, get my remote again. Can I just say this? There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with getting people to pray for you. I know there's strength in numbers. But until you, now I want you to look at me and listen to what I'm saying. Until you learn to pray for yourself, uh, ain't no use you going and asking somebody else to pray for you. Until you get yourself where you need to be with God and get the, the maggots out of your roots, root maggots off of you, amen, you're never going to change. There's no use of going, oh, ain't Felicia, Uncle Sid, oh, I got this problem in my marriage, I got this problem in my, at work, and oh, I got this financial thing, I don't know what in the world I'm going to you get the maggots killed, amen, that's this, this destroying your roots, uh, you're not going to do any good, you're just going to wear ain't whoever she is, Felicia and Uncle Sid, whoever I said, I made those names up. You're just going to wear them out. And the whole time the Lord's saying, I can't change this. You're asking me to, to, to make this different. And they got worms that are eating up their roots. And until they repent and clean the, the worms off the roots, I can't bless them. So you're wearing Aunt Felicia and Uncle see it out. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Until you first give your heart to the Lord. Now, there's an illustration in the Word of God we was learning this morning in the early church because most of you weren't here. You was taking care of your worms. <clears throat> Brother Jimmy, that resembles me. Yeah, it does, don't it? Hey, Amen. I ain't going to apologize over it either. Hey, Amen. Get up and get over it. Grow up and get over it. Hey, Amen. Truth is a truth. But in the... <laughs> Some of you had reasons and others had worms. <laughs> Amen. But in the Word of God we were studying this morning where Jesus said, What man gets ready to build a building that don't first sit down and count the cost unless he gets started and he's mocked because he does not have sufficient funds to be able to finish that building. He said, what king would, would, would go forth to war with another king without first seeing whether or not he had enough uh, he, uh, people to stand against the 20,000 that was coming against him? Who would do this unless that when the uh, war started, he would have to send uh, uh, terms of surrender to the king after him uh, threatening with war? You don't do that. You have to know for sure whether or not you got it, whether or not you want it, whether or not you're going to sustain it before you can ever walk it, live it, uh, amen, and be a disciple for Jesus. That's the reason why a lot of people in church and out of church and in church and out of church, uh, amen, you can't teach them nothing because they spend their whole life repenting and backsliding. <laughs> they go to church and repent. They go home and backslide before the next week. Didn't get a hold of much, I can tell you that right now. If you didn't get enough to keep you at least a week, you didn't get much. Amen. If I go to the table and eat pinto beans and I'm starved to death in 30 minutes, it's because I only ate one bean instead of a plate full. Amen. That's just a country boy's analogy. Amen. See, this it's the worms. Amen, that are, that, are, that, are, that are stealing the nutrients. It's the worms, amen, that are killing our churches today. It's the worms, amen, that's keeping fruit, amen, from being brought forth. You know what? If the church, amen, is completely pruned and blossomed and the limbs is full of fruits, this is what the lost community is going to say. Where is it you go to church? How do you get there? What time does the service start? Can I ride with you? Did you know in other countries right now, and, and I know there's people in the Philistines and, and, and uh, uh, Philippines. I don't know why I say Philistines. That's a preacher thing. Philippines, thank you. I had to have my wife straighten. By the way, me and my wife had our anniversary Wednesday of this week, and we've been married 38 years this week. Praise the Lord. Amen. She's been a big help to me. Amen. She helps keep me straight. So it's uh, 
the Philippines. <laughs> Amen. But the Philippines is where I, I heard from and different places, uh, amen, that we'll hear, uh, that, that I hear from this watching the television program. I want to minister to them. I want to be a blessing to them. Amen. And, and, and all those places uh, where they hear the word of God, uh, hopefully they'll kill the worms. Hopefully it will kill the worms. But until we get the worms killed, uh, we're never going to change. We're never going to grow. We're never going to be able to do anything, uh, amen, that's going to be uh, bringing honor and praise and glory to the kingdom of God. Uh, and we need to examine ourselves. Let every man first examine himself. If we examine ourselves, we won't have time to be examining our brother and our sister. Because you know what you're going to find when you examine your brother and your sister? You're going to get hurt. You're going to get discouraged because they're not going to be everything you think they are. Now, I'm not saying everybody's a hypocrite. That's not what I'm saying. I did not say that. But I'm saying you're going to find some type of fault in every person. They may not be doing a bad sin, but you're going to find something that's just offensive to you that you don't like. Amen. That's why we need to take care of the number one hypocrite. That's the one you shaved this morning. <laughs> that's the one you put Avon on. Well, Jimmy, I don't wear Avon. Well, that's the one that you looked at when you combed your hair. Amen. Brushed your teeth. Hopefully you did. That's the one that you were looking at at the mirror. Amen. That you were talking that didn't talk back. Amen. That's the one that we need to examine. That's the one we need to work on. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to have a worm killing. Well, Jimmy, what does it take to kill the worms? It takes the Word of God. It takes the Spirit of God to kill the worms. You can't tickle a worm and him die. You can't jump up and down and hold it. <laughs> that worm ain't going to say, you done scared me to death. I'm going to roll over and die. No. He's going to say, you fool, what are you doing? you jumping up and down, ranting and raving. I'm getting ready to eat some more. You're not bothering me. That worm's not scared of you. But it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks, amen, the yoke of sin and a bondage that will set you free. We need to come to Jesus. We need to keep running to the Lord and say, Lord, I found the biggest hypocrite in the country, and I brought them to the altar this morning. It's me. Help me, Lord, get those worms taken care of. See, we need to examine ourselves. We need to look. Do I have the fruit? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody, I don't care how sharp or how dull your knife may be, <laughs> you know whether or not you're bringing forth fruit or there's nothing there. Brother Jimmy, I've been through a whole lot. Don't start that stuff with me. I don't know anybody that had been through a whole lot. If you're going to live here in 2015, you're going to go through a whole lot if you're alive. Amen. Everybody's going to go through something. I hear one discouragement right after another. Sometimes I hear things that just almost stops my breath. Just almost unbearable. But I want to tell you something, folks. When everything's said and done, I need to go back to the Lord, examine my roots, see whether or not there's worms. I've allowed worms to get on them. And I'm going to go ahead and say this, and I'm going to quit. I'm going to try to. The church, every one of us, needs to have worship in us not just on Sunday morning. We need to have worship through the week. When we come to church, we need to bring our worship with us. And then when the preacher and the others in the church begin to worship the Lord, you will fall right in because you won't be able to stand it. See, when I go to a conference, I go to a revival somewhere, they're fired up, I pick up right where they at. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to shout and praise my God. Last year, I went up to Independence, Kentucky, I took, uh, made a mistake and only took one handkerchief with me. I needed two in every service. I never cried. I cried like a baby. The whole time the preacher preached, I cried and I shouted and I cried and I shouted. I jumped, danced a little time or two. I had me a fit. Amen. Everybody else having a fit too. You couldn't keep them having a fit. The only way to keep them having a fit was to leave. Amen. Go to the altar and get right with God and then you could have a fit and you wouldn't have to leave. Amen. But the anointing and the power of God was there so strong. You're going to move up or move out one or the other. And I'm always praying, Lord, move me up. Kill everything in me that you don't want. Destroy every worm in my life. I want to be able to bear forth the fruit. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. 
God will not allow this one to have a little bitty fruit and that one over there to have a big fruit just because he likes you better. It's just this one has got the big fruit, has got his worms killed. And that one's got a little fruit, like some of them worms. I just hate to get rid of the poor old things that have been around for so long. I've got some of them named. George and Phyllis and Fred and Pete and Susie. Susie, would you eat over on the other corner of my route? I'm going to let that soak in for a minute. It needs to be like a rain. You have a gully washer and you have him slow two-inch rains over a three-day period. That's what we need. But this morning, I hope this is ministered to you. I hope this has helped you. Let's examine ourselves. Let's look at the root. Let's look at the trunk. If the roots is on the worms is on the roots, we need to get the worms killed. But we first need to examine our trunk because it's not going to do any good to kill them thousand worms when you got four more bags worth a thousand eggs in each one of them fixing to the hatch. We need to examine ourselves, get the bag worms killed so that the root maggots don't destroy us. Amen. Would you stand with us? That's the message today. I hope you enjoyed the program today. I hope it was a blessing to you. I want to give you a, a, a way that you can send money in uh, to donate to help us stay on the air. And I'm not a prosperity preacher, and I, I, I'm not going to beg for money or anything like that, but I do want to give you an opportunity to send money. If you prayerfully uh, have been led by the Holy Spirit to give, it takes money to keep this on the air uh, and to come into your home each week. And... Uh, the Bible says, uh, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. And I believe if we'll live right, do what God tells us to do, uh, pay our tithes uh, and be faithful to our local church, and then give as the Holy Spirit leads you to give to ministries, then God will bless you. Amen. Uh, and I, I know that uh, there's some of you that enjoys the program, and this is a way that you can support by financially supporting and uh, sending money in uh, to our program. And I'm going to tell you where you can send this. You can send it to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, Kentucky, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Also, I'd love to hear from you. You can uh, email me at pastor at glasgow-ky.com. That's pastor at glasgow-ky.com. And we'd love to hear from you. I hope this has uh, been a blessing to you, and we could sure use your support. And I want to ask you to pray about this and pray that God would lead you uh, about giving and supporting the program. We need to get the Word of God out any way that we possibly can. This thing's drawing to an end, and there's souls out there that are lost. There are souls out there that are they're not hearing the truth. And you know by what I'm saying, there's a lot of stuff that's on television uh, prosperity preaching and a lot of stuff that doesn't line up with the Word of God. It's not about uh, getting rich and it's not about money. It's about knowing that we've been born again by the Spirit of God and that we're ready to meet God when the trumpet blows or when we breathe our last breath. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after death is the judgment. So we need to be getting the word out to the lost and dying world and telling those that are hurting there's hope in Christ Jesus. Help me get this message out to the multitudes. God bless you.